So this year I made some upgrades to my YouTube equipment. It's been six years that I've been on YouTube now. I had been using the same camera, same lens, same microphone, everything for a very long time. And I finally decided it was time to make some, make some upgrades. So in this video, I wanna share with you the five gear upgrades that I made this year that really improved the quality of my videos and it improved my workflow and it made me happy. Let's be honest, new YouTube gear makes us all happy, right? So let's get started with the most expensive upgrade that I made this year, and that is my brand new camera. What I am recording on right now, the camera that I am looking at right now is the Canon M6 Mark II. This is a Canon mirrorless camera. I'm gonna have to break out this old guy in order to show you the new guy. This is the Canon 70D. This is a DSLR camera. I've been using this since day one here on my YouTube channel, so like almost six years. And I just have been using just a regular kit lens. It's the lens that comes with a camera. Nothing fancy, nothing special. It actually works great, and there's very few reasons why I needed to upgrade to something new. It's just that those few reasons were kind of important, and I'll talk about those in just a minute. As I'm recording this, it is definitely the time of year where you wanna start thinking about any purchases that you wanna make, especially when it comes to tech, because it's, it's the holidays, it's Black Friday, Cyber Monday, all this stuff. If you're new here, my name is Meredith Marsh and this channel is dedicated to helping your side hustle thrive with YouTube as a video content creator so that you can become the boss of your own future and create options and opportunities for yourself outside of a traditional job. So if that sounds like your jam, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I also wanna let you know that everything that I mentioned here in this video, I'm going to link to down in the description below this video. So rewind about two months ago when Canon announced the new Canon M50 Mark II. It's like the 2.0 version of their M50 model that they released two years ago. And I've been waiting for this new model to come out because I thought I really wanted to try a mirrorless, especially something small, something that I can get to know, give you a review. So I have something um, you know, besides my ancient clunky DSLR to recommend to people. So on the day that it came out, I put in a pre-order for the M50 Mark II, and then on a total whim, because it was also Amazon Prime Day, I decided to buy the M6 Mark II, which is also a Canon camera. It's a mirrorless. Yes, I bought two cameras in one day, but one of them got shipped to me right away, and I'm still waiting for the pre-ordered M50 Mark II. So I've been using the M6 Mark II for the past about 30-ish days and I love it. I think it's great. There's some quirky things about it that I will tell you about, but for the most part, I don't really have too many complaints about it. I mean, it's a camera, it's a Canon. It's great for YouTube videos. It's great for taking still photos as well. It has a flip up screen. It has a microphone jack so I can use my microphone, which I'll talk about in just a minute. It. it also has the ability to connect to my computer so that I can live stream and record directly from my computer as well. Now I told you that there were a couple of reasons why I felt like I really wanted to upgrade from my 70D DSLR to something newer. The main reason is because Although I could use this for live streaming like on Facebook or YouTube, I couldn't use it with Zoom and I really wanted to we'll say up level my professional video camera quality on Zoom calls. And the reason why is because I'm on Zoom all the time. I'm talking to one-on-one -on -one clients. I'm talking to my Video Pursuit Society members. I'm talking to my business friends, my mastermind friends. But sometimes I'm on there presenting something. I'm in you know, somebody else's group as a guest expert or a guest trainer talking about YouTube and video and all that kind of stuff. I want to put my you know, best foot forward and like the Logitech webcam just isn't cutting it. I want my appearance on a Zoom call 
to be just as high a quality as it is in my YouTube videos. And I couldn't do that with a 70D. There was no software adapter. There was no possible way to make this guy work with Zoom that I could find. And the other thing about the 70D is that while I shoot at 1080, I'm shooting at 1080 right now. I can't shoot at 4K because my computer will choke on it, but it doesn't do higher frame rates at 1080. And I wanted to be able to shoot some slow motion B-roll or at least have the option to shoot that at 1080. So that's the second important reason why I upgraded my camera. Next up, my second YouTube gear up level this year was the lens itself. Now with the M6 Mark II, I got mine with the kit lens so this is a little bit of a smaller lens than what you would find on your standard dslr camera so if you're going to make an upgrade you can use your dslr lenses but you'll have to get an adapter now i didn't get an adapter what i did was i just upgraded the lens entirely so what i'm using right now is a sigma 16 millimeter 1.4 aperture lens and if you're the kind of person who's like if you start spewing numbers and millimeters and focal lengths and apertures you're gonna lose me trust me i get it i am not really a camera nerd at all i just like to learn enough to make my videos look good or look good enough for YouTube. And so I wanna share with you a couple reasons why this lens is so important, especially if you're somebody who doesn't have a big, beautiful, well-lit space to shoot your YouTube videos. Okay, so as you can see right now, I'm sitting at my desk. My computer is right in front of me. So this is where I'm sitting when I'm on a Zoom call or when I'm live streaming or anything like that. So this camera has essentially, I mean, not even essentially, it has literally replaced my actual webcam. And for anyone who hasn't watched any of my previous videos where I talk about my YouTube studio at home setup and given you a little bit of a tour, this is just a spare bedroom in the basement of my house and it is tiny. And so with a small space where you're trying to, you know, have it be like studio like to shoot YouTube videos, but you also need it to be functional and office spacey. And you also want to be able to sit at your computer and show up to a Zoom call and not have a bunch of junk behind you. It's like real life Tetris in here, okay? And if you're wondering, what does having a small office have to do with your camera lens? And when you have a nice lens with a wide-ish, 16 millimeters is, from what I understand, um, it's as, as, close as you can get without it being like fisheye. And having a nice wide aperture, the more you can get this depth of field effect. That's where it's like blurry in the background. It makes it look like I'm actually further away from this back wall than I am. It makes my space look a little more spacious, even when it's not. Now, at some point in the future, I will do a video explaining my exact video settings here on the M6 Mark II, the ISO, the f-stop, frame rate, all that kind of stuff. So make sure you hit subscribe if you're gonna be interested in all the number stuff. Now the downside, if you can call it that, to this lens is it's 16 millimeters, it's a fixed focal length. I can't change the focal length. It's like if I want to be closer or further away, I have to move closer or further away. But for what I need it for, which is my YouTube videos and as a webcam, that's perfect for me. And if I was gonna walk around and vlog with it, which I never do, then it would work for that as well. This is what the kit lens looks like on the same settings. Of course, the aperture is different. The aperture is a higher number. It's letting in less light. So in order to adapt, I would need to increase my ISO, which is totally possible. I'm doing this from my computer. But when you increase the ISO, then the image quality just kind of like degrades a little bit which is fine. This is totally fine for YouTube videos, but you'll notice that my background is not as blurry. Hence the upgrade to the Sigma 16 millimeter. Okay, next up is the, wait, I need to put my nice lens back on. Hang on. Next up, upgrade number three is the Elgato Cam Link. Earlier this year, Canon released some software that made it possible to use your Canon camera as a webcam, it did not work with my 70D, but that's because it's a dinosaur. And I thought it was gonna work with the M6 Mark II, but it didn't, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't make it work. So I got the Elgato Cam Link, which is, this is a way for you to connect your camera 
to your computer through the HDMI. So it's not connected through like directly through USB. It, it, it is connected through USB, but through an HDMI port that made so much sense. But this is the thing that allows me to use my Canon um, with my Zoom calls. It may also be the thing that allows you to use your Canon for other live streaming Mine already worked for regular live streaming. It's just for the Zoom, I needed the thing. I needed the thing for the Zoom. You know what I'm talking about. Now this is actually one of my favorite angles in my office with, I got the shelves, I got my desk behind me, all the crap on my desk that you can see. But upgrade number four is actually my audio. I got a new microphone. This is the Rode Wireless Go. Now the reason I have these is because I want to show you what I used to have set up so you can see how nice and easy it is to have just a better upgraded workflow and equipment with my new microphone. But this is my old setup. I had my Canon 70D. This is a shotgun mic from Rode. It sits on top and if the microphone is facing you, the person who's talking, then your audio is fine as long as you are literally like a foot away. <laughs> If any other scenario is happening, then you're out of luck with your audio. That was very limiting. Like the only way that I could shoot videos was literally if I'm sitting in front of the camera talking to it, which is basically what I do anyway, but I wanted to have some other options. The other thing too, is this has to actually be connected to the actual camera. So I upgraded to the Rode Wireless Go, which is a wireless lab. So this is the lav mic, it sits on my, uh, my lapel, it goes down through my shirt. It's connected to this little guy, which is a transmitter. So this stays with me. I can put it in my pocket. I can put it, I can just clip it to my pants. It has an actual clip. So I can clip it to my pants or my shirt or whatever. And then there's a receiver that's plugged into the actual camera. I can be as far away as I need to from the camera itself. I can move around. I'm not connected. My uh, my, my microphone is connected to me and the receiver is connected to the camera and it just works wirelessly. Now, one of the downsides, not so much with the microphone, but with the camera and the microphone is when, when the screen is flipped up, you can't use that hot shoe mount with anything. So, I mean, honestly, if I was using the shotgun mic, I would definitely be out of luck. But with the Rode Wireless Go, because because the receiver is so small, you can't just let it dangle. It's a little bit janky to do that, but you can also get a magnet from Rode so that I think it's designed so that you don't have to clip the transmitter to anything. You can actually use a magnet, which is fine, but I actually use it on the receiver because I can use the magnet to magnetize to my tripod or I magnetize it to the, um, what is this thing called? Oh, the switch pod. I, I use the ball head from the switch pod on my actual tripod. So it sticks on the tripod. Also will magnetize to the hot shoe. It doesn't slide in, but it will sit on top and be secure, relatively secure that way. But then it's covering up the flip screen. So it still doesn't work like that. Last, but definitely not least is this guy right here, my Apple iPad Pro, my pencil, and the keyboard. The magic, is it magic? Yeah, it's the magic keyboard. The magic floating keyboard. I actually did a review on this, which I will link to for you down in the description. I, I showed what I use it for in my personal life, what I use it for in my business life. And seriously, if you have been thinking, I wonder what it's like to just be able to write with a pencil on an iPad, it's amazing. It's seriously, it's, it's amazing. I love it. Now I know that Apple recently released the iPad Air, which has similar features and stuff to the Pro, and you can use the Apple Pencil and all that good stuff too. So you may wanna check that out. I'll put that in, uh, in the links below as well. And although it is the most wonderful time of year for upgrading your YouTube gear and getting all those Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Monday deals and all that stuff, I also wanna let you know that this is actually the perfect time of year to start thinking about what you want to accomplish next year. So if you've been thinking about starting a YouTube side hustle or an online business as a side hustle using YouTube, then please stick around, hit that subscribe button and get started with this series of videos right here.